So there's another question that's coming uh, from uh, someone named Scarlace. And Scarlace here, she says, I love her videos. I have a question for her. She has repeatedly bashed theories like string theory for being scientifically lacking in their predictive power or provability, yet she believes in super determinism. How does she rationalize this position? Well, because super determinism does make predictions. <laughs> I mean, like, I've given talks about this. I've written papers about it. Um, the problem is that the, the experiments are not being done. So uh, I'm trying to get people uh, to actually do these experiments. Um, I've, I'm actually, I'm always surprised that people think I'm bashing string theory or that I'm highly skeptic of it uh, or, or something. I actually think that string theory does have quite some merit. You know, it's, it's based on, on, on a good idea. Um, and it was trying to solve an actual problem, which is the missing quantization of gravity. Uh, I think he kind of went into the wrong direction um, when, when, when they were trying to hard to make things work out and so on and so forth. So maybe if they had been a little more intellectually honest early on, then it wouldn't have gone downhill <laughs> quite as far. But I mean, there's some interesting <laughs> things that have come out of it. Um, the ADS-CFT stuff um, is certainly worthwhile. Um, so that that's all fine with me. Mm -hmm. So uh, Sisnad Sitos asked, what do you think about the free will theorem? Uh, and uh, have you seen John Conway's lectures on it, his philosophical arguments? I think if you look at it the right way, uh, free will theorem and super determinism will turn out to be equivalent. Now, I always say, Sabina, I believe in free will because I have no other choice. But uh, what do you make about this? Uh, free will, obviously, it plays it. And I, I think the, the main answer is by the book, because she, she covers that in great detail. And she has some videos on it. Buy it. Listen to it in all three formats. Um, so maybe we'll move on to uh, other questions. <clears throat> um, here's a question. The nothing channel. Sabina is critical of the particle physics field, but is also against building larger colliders. I understand her points, but then how does she think we go forward? Should we just give up on particle physics until we get more clues to guide us? And how will we get those clues? Thank you, nothing channel. It's not that I'm against particle physics or something like this. I, I've been um, very specifically against building this super expensive future circular collider because I just think it's too much money for too little benefit. Now, there are certainly interesting things that you can still do in particle physics. Uh, it's not that I'm saying let's, let's throw out all particle physicists. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite that uh, bad. But also, I mean, I've, I've extensively talked about what we should do instead, uh, right? I've, I've literally written a whole book about it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm saying we should focus on trying to resolve actual inconsistencies. For example, the missing quantization of gravity is one of them, and there's the measurement problem. There's also dark matter. Um, which um, he, he just said he, you'll be talking about uh, with, with, with uh, someone in the channel in, in the near future. Um, so, which of course we're already doing experiments about, like for example, the Webb telescope, right? Is, is giving us uh, better data as we speak. And uh, there's certainly something that we will learn from it about, uh, about dark matter. So it, it's not like we're completely stuck without building this huge collider. <laughs> 